Alrighty, it's February 28th, 2012, and it's now 8.30 a.m., and it's time for Comets X. Well, yesterday, uh, I was able to get a lot accomplished. It was our first, the first day that the, uh, HD camera was working, or, uh, that, uh, the, the, that room is now back in operations. Uh, I, the first video I put up with it was, uh, something for King of the Web. I really had no, I don't really know what King of the Web really is. Uh, this is, uh, only gonna, well, March, March is gonna be my third month, uh, being a YouTuber, so I'm still pretty much figuring things out, and... I, was like, I just tried it to try to do it. It was no, uh, the, I don't really expect to win. I don't really win much of anything, so, uh, and just for the fun of it, I, I created an entry, you know, <laughs> just, just because, uh, and then I also nominated, uh, a, a big, uh, I nominated, uh, Right and Proper Ladies, and today I'll probably end up nominating, uh, uh, Nerds RL for, uh, uh, King of the Web as well. Uh, beyond that, uh, I realized that uh, I have to um, get uh, my network uh, rebalanced because uh, the amount of time it takes to render out a project uh, on, uh, on one computer system is really prohibitive, so what I need to do is I need to assign uh, various different computers on my network, the rendering pro, pro so that it always keeps systems free. I, there's a system I can work on, so it do, the rendering doesn't lock up my day. I mean, yesterday I was uh, doing work on um, uh, on bringing out uh, what's it called? Uh, oh yeah, uh, well the institute. See, I, I, the work as 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 I decided rather than than just simply keeping things all under physics, I decided to organize things as my library grew. Uh, you know, I, I built a library based on the uh, quantum physics principle of, of the random walk. As my library has grown, uh, I decided to organize the library into institutes uh, uh, covering specific areas. So one of the institutes that I'm bringing out that I've been working on for a number of years now and has got enough stuff that I can start bringing things out onto it uh, is uh, so known as the BAS Institute, B-A-S Institute. Uh, it stands for the Byzantine and Antiquities Studies. Uh, that institute is going to cover everything from anthropology to archaeology. Uh, so everything, anything that has to do with uh, history will more or less come out of there. And history is going to be basically uh, either anthropology and or uh, anthropology and or archaeologically based. Those are the two primary things that's going to come out of. And I'm actually going to do the next goal for a couple years down the line is I want to work on uh, a museum for it, so I can present all the information. But how I'm going to bring the museum out—that's sort of another question there. Uh, so I got that done, and then, uh, being the phys astrophysicist that I am, uh, I do have my own space program. Uh, it's n uh, I have another called the AP Institute, the Astronomy and Physics Institute. That's where all the astronomy and physics is done. In there, there is the space program. Uh, I'll have the links to everything in the down below bar. And the space program has an expedition I've been doing for uh, at least more than ten years now. Uh, it's uh, known as a Mars Alpha. It's known as Mars Alpha now. Uh, Mars stands for uh, the Mars Analog Analog Research Station. Uh, several years back. Uh, I was looking at the models uh, being proposed to send uh, a, a research expedition to Mars. And I realized with the length and length of time just to get there and to come back, uh, the best approximation, right, the best approximation is three years. And they say they're going to have uh, what they call a co-ed 
uh, crew. Well, the thing is, is if you're going to have a co-ed crew, it doesn't matter. When you put people in close proximity to each other, this is even occurs in any work environment. Things are going to happen, uh, assuming it, that it's nothing bad happens in terms of everyone's getting along. But the thing is, if you have a co-ed crew, uh, the other thing you have to worry about is people getting along too well and uh, resulting in children. Because don't forget, uh, if your dura mission duration at a, at a minimum is three month, is not uh, three years, uh, nine months is sufficient to have a baby. So, you know, what do you do when you, ha when you, <laughs> you know, you're, you're uh, uh, one year into the mission and all of a sudden, you know, someone had gotten too little too friendly on the, uh, uh, on the voyage and now there is uh, a f there is a uh, an extra member of the uh, research expedition that you didn't encounter didn't expect or you know what do you do do you just simply throw it out the airlock and <laughs> goodbye <laughs> you know, I don't think you could do that I mean well it depends on it depends on the state of, of, of how they're thinking at that time but even but if they're at that point if if they're at that point in socialism where they can simply throw uh, someone out of the air lot because, uh, well, there's not enough. Uh, uh, they didn't expect to have enough uh, provisions or supplies aboard uh, to accommodate uh, this extra person that they didn't expect. Uh, now, well, now why they didn't expect such a person being, they're all scientists and medical, uh, and, and, and medical doctors you know, because uh, this has to go through uh, medical approval. The, the number of people working on this with the number of degrees they have in the various different areas, to assume that you have a co ed crew that, that in, in within three years, that it's not possible that the person's going to, one, one of the crew members is going to have a baby? <laughs> have they not been watching uh, the, 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 these, these, this NASA, these NASA dramas where people are driving across the country in diapers to kill one another? Well, so I guess, anyways, the, my uh, my view on this was rather than doing a simple expedition, was to look for a model where you could literally, uh, basically float an entire civilization up there. And I did find a model, and this was sort of as sort of uh, doing my work on in the Bats Institute. Uh, I had spent a number of years studying. Uh, the Polynesians, because I found, found the Polynesian culture uh, quite interesting, and there was uh, a researcher by the name of Thor Heyerdahl, who's, uh, I think he's from the Netherlands, uh, I need to sort of check on this, and he actually recreated how the Polynesians got from island to island. And to, their to everyone's surprise is that as he went through and went through their folklore, they actually floated an entire island. They didn't float in, They floated entire villages from island to island. So if you you know that one island is getting too small and you need to move out to another island, you packed up an entire village and moved the entire village from island to island. You know until you got enough space for yourself. And this is sort of the process that went on. And they, they, they took everything. They took pigs. They, 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 they took, you know, pigs are their, their, primary, their primary source of food. They probably had some birds that they took with them, like a chicken or something like that. Um, uh, they brought plants. Um, uh, transplanting, uh, uh, how you got crops from one point to another was really interesting because it wasn't that they necessarily used, used things from seeds. If you got it to a seedling stage and then was able to pot it, and they were able to do this, uh, then you could cart this this plant from island to island, and you would have a form of agriculture that would be not the um, standard rectangular-based agriculture that we see that came out of... Uh, out of uh, North America, where you have symmetrical farms, but you would have 
But we guess we would call them asymmetrical farms. And asymmetrical agriculture where uh, the planting boundaries were not set or rigid. And could flow over one area, you know, it could be, you know, you have a brook so, uh, or a stream, and you could have plants on either side of the stream, but not necessarily on top of the stream. Uh, they used um, something uh, of a uh, separate fruit, I really don't really know what it is yet, called uh, breadfruit. Uh, they made uh, clothes out of that, and they also had, in addition to having some food, you know, uh, some food based items coming out of there. I know there is in uh, the east. I still, I've tried it a bit, but uh, it takes a bit of, you know, you have to be, uh, a lot of Asian foods, and uh, it, I like them, but you have to get used to the smelliness of them. Uh, the example is, uh, the one example is dur uh, durian. Uh, it's uh, the fruit that comes, uh, it doesn't look like a fruit, but it's sold in the fruit section. Uh, it's pretty big. Uh, if you can sort of get the gauge here, it's like about that big between my hands. It's got spikes all over it. And even when the shell isn't cracked, if it's thawed out, it stinks. It smells up the entire, it will fill an entire grocery store with its stink, but as soon as you crack it open, it gets even worse. Uh, and despite the stink, if you mix it with uh, a variety of things like, like yogurt or, 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 or anything along the lines that you, that, that you can even put in something sweetened into it as well, uh, it actually becomes a uh, pretty good uh, additive to the food that's natural. But I really do need to sort of, I, I've done it for, I've done a, uh, one or two different recipes with, with durian, but I really do need to do more recipes with durian to really get a feel for it so before I can sort of say uh, how it can be used in different dishes. Uh, but for my uh, initial experience is that I think you can use it, uh, if you don't have egg, you can use it as an egg substitute and actually make with with, uh, with soya and make a custard out of it. So you, because what happens is that the the, the, the final smelliness of the, of it is uh, is a high sulfur content, and that's what eggs have. Eggs have the distinctive flavor of eggs is the high sulfur, particularly in the yolks. So you can take the durian and make a custard uh, with durian and uh, the soy soybean, uh, you know, the tofu. And you can make a custard if you, if you mix it with mango. Like let's say you make, you make a make, make a mango jelly or something like that. Uh, you can mix those three together, and you can get a really nice, you know, a mango custard out of it. And that's my next goal. Is I want to take the um, the standard uh, cheese uh, teropita. That's the, that's the that's the that's the Greek pastry that the the fluff pastry that has. Uh, a cheese and egg based uh, uh, filling inside of it. It's sort of like a, a, like, like a good teropita has a feta based omelet inside of it. So it's basically take a, an omelet, wrap it in filo dough, and that's what a good teropita is. Now, you could do the same thing and have it be completely vegetarian and, and, and what happens a, a lot of the cultures including my culture uh, we don't eat meat we don't eat meat, meat for more than half the year and so for a long time for more than 10,000 years we've had this sort of this vegetarian diet that's really really been sort of been tested out and so there is a lot of non-meat dishes non-dairy dishes that you can have uh, when you're in, in these particular vegetarian periods, that, you know, we call them fasting, you know, this is, it's not the same that you would find in the Western fasting, it's a little different, uh, because the foods are certainly very different as well. Um, you can do things, uh, like giving example, in, instead of using butter in a field of dough, you can use a good olive oil. If you whip a, if you whip a good olive oil, you can use it as the layers of fat in between the field of dough, as you're rolling out the filo dough. And this is assuming that you actually make your own filo dough. 
So, but anyways, the point here being is that you can, as seen through the Polynesians, float, float, float villages from island to island. So if we treat planets like islands, there's no reason why in a period of time we can't take the lessons learned from the village lifestyle and floating village from, you know, village, floating a village from island to island to doing the same thing by, uh, by moving a village into space and then floating it from planet to planet or wherever you want to put it in space. So this is the Mars Analog Research Station that I've set up uh, in a remote uh, Greek village uh, a little north of Toronto. Uh, a lot of the uh, older Greeks uh, in um, the parish that I go to, uh, they're all mountain and village people uh, who, <laughs> surprisingly enough, uh, can do more or less anything they want to do. They want something, they don't wait f for someone to give it to them. They get up and make it and build it. And they wanted a nice retirement village. Uh, but normally these things are really expensive. So we have a 200 acre property uh, north of Toronto. It's in a really nice wooded area. There's nothing around it. And they built a tiny little village there for themselves, a retirement village. Uh, although it doesn't look like a retirement village, it looks like a tiny little 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 uh, village that you would find in the mountains someplace. So uh, this is where I chose to build the Mars uh, the Mars uh, the Mars uh, project, uh, and now we're in the first version, Mars Alpha. So uh, that's what I've done so far. We're working on that t uh, yesterday, and continue working on it today. Uh, I will post, uh, and you'll see this as the feet. You'll the, the, see new channels coming up uh, on the uh, my YouTube, uh, ch ch the featured page on the YouTube channel. Uh, that's going to be uh, different, so uh, you can check that out. And you can also follow me on Twitter as I do things on YouTube. Uh, I have everything streaming either to my Twitter account or my Facebook feed, so you can sort of track me either on Facebook or on Twitter. Alrighty, I'll talk to you a little bit later on.